before wandering traders were, as we know them today, a little derpy, not the brightest, and always having less than stellar trades, they were actually mighty warriors who were not afraid to take on anything or anyone. These heroes for hire gladly accepted any quest that you'd need them to do, as long as you had enough emeralds. Some wandering heroes were born into greatness, having the natural skills and fearlessness to charge headfirst into battle and defeat any monster. While other heroes, like me, were formed through turmoil, we would travel through the epic world of Minecraft in search of adventure and, of course, emeralds. I acquired three goals when I began my journey as a wandering trader and hero. Number one, get two pet companions to carry my things. Number two, build a safe haven for my fellow wanderers and I to rest between adventures. And my third goal was given to me the first night after I left my my village. Really quick, if you enjoy this video, consider liking and subscribing because we are so close to halfway to a million subscribers. Alright, now here's the story of my first 100 days as a wandering trader. Day 1. After this seemingly random fire that had consumed my village finally went out, I searched the rubble for any survivors. All I could find was a chest that had a warrior's cloak inside. With no home anymore, I decided to wander the lands attempting to help anyone that I could in an attempt to cope with the loss of my village. I gathered some spruce wood as well as some bamboo from the nearby jungle, then I left the remains of my home behind. <laughs> Don't worry, there was some water down there. I needed some basic materials to survive, so I gathered some cobblestone and crafted some better tools. Then I I grabbed a little coal, and soon I was on the hunt for food. While my next meal roasted on the fire, I went mining for some iron to upgrade my equipment and get myself some armor for whatever things that I would face in the wild. While I was mining, I noticed the light flashing deep in the cave. When I jumped down, I landed into the sponsored part of this video, sponsored by Monster Legends, a free-to-play game available on both Android and iOS. I love to build, and you begin your adventure in Monster Legends by building a world for your monsters to live in. Then you are ready to start collecting all types of monsters and building up a formidable force. There are literally hundreds of monsters to collect and add to your army. You can get awesome YouTubers like Dream, Mr. Beast, Jacksepticeye, and more. You can also collect monsters with six different rarities and many types of elements. And the best part, you can breed monsters together to create cool new species. The combinations are limitless. I dare you to try something crazy like breeding a water and fire monster together and let me know what kind of crazy creatures you get. Level up your monsters, choose their skills, and strategize how to win these action-packed battles. And for those who enjoy PvP like me, there are different modes where you can conquer the adventure map, explore dungeons, and fight in real time against your friends. New events happen every week for you to discover and play new adventures, and you can also team up with other monster masters to chat, strategize, and battle in epic team wars. If you download the game through the link in the description, you will receive a special reward worth $30 for absolutely free, including 10 gems, 50,000 food, 300,000 gold, and the epic monster Kaori. This offer is only available until September 26th, so download the game and I will see you on the battlefield. Now let's find out what that third goal was. That night, I had set up a little camp and was waiting for my iron to smelt when I was visited by a unique looking witch. You seem to be the adventurous type. I have a quest for you. And what would that be? All I need you to do is go into another dimension and bring me the head and egg of a powerful dragon. She made it sound like it was no big deal. Then she gave me some emeralds and said there was much more where that came from once I completed this third goal of mine. She told me to meet her at her swamp hut once I completed my quest. She also gave me this book with steps to defeating this interdimensional dragon. And when I looked up for more explanation, she was gone. So I crafted a bed and went to sleep, pondering the journey now laid out before me. The next morning, as I was getting iron from my furnaces, I heard the rattle of bones. When I looked up, a skeleton jumped down and 360 no-scoped me. I didn't have a shield yet, so I circled around him until I could finally land the final blow. Now, you'd think I could begin crafting a full set of armor, but something much worse joined me in the cave. It was only day two of my adventure and I almost perished. <laughs> Luckily, my crafting table was right in the way. I finished the rest of my armor and had enough iron left over for a pickaxe. Then, I gathered my things and spent the next few days exploring for a good place to settle down. And look how many goats are all herded together here. Oh yeah, this is me killing chickens for food and feathers, as well as cows for food and leather. While exploring this mountain range, I came across some llamas, but sadly did not have any leads to take them with me. On day five, my travels led me to a marshy swamp land. I gathered vines and wood to use for my builds while I awaited night to fall. I found this cool looking ruined nether portal with a gold apple inside. Then when the moon began to emerge, 
challenge. The hunt for slime commenced. They were no challenge. It was all the other creatures I was more worried about. But soon enough, I had all the ingredients I needed to craft some leads. Day six, I continued my search for a good place to build. I was looking for a nice big open field that was close to llama populated mountains. The perfect traveling companion. And that's when I discovered this quaint little village. It was really nice to be among fellow villagers again. Only a week had passed since the fire, and after losing everything, it was really hard not to steal from these innocent villagers. They seemed to be doing pretty well for themselves, at least until this child asked me for assistance. His cat had gotten stuck in a tree, so I cut down the tree and walked away feeling accomplished. I started to feel a little better after helping others. I spent some of my emeralds to get arrows, and then one of the villagers were nice enough to let me stay in their house. On the morning of day 8, I said my farewells to the villagers and continued on my way. I ventured out to the savanna biome where I discovered some more llamas. I quickly ran up to one of them and jumped on its back. After a few tries, I was finally able to tame two llamas and attach some leads to them. I was very glad I had gotten these llamas because the very next day, I found this villager who was in a bit of distress. Turns out, he was from the village I was just at. He was trying to bring some barrels of potatoes to another village to sell, but his cart had broken down. So he sold them to me for cheap and told me to sell it at the other village for a profit. Then he unhooked his horse and headed back home. Once I had grabbed the barrels, I crafted some chests to put on my llamas. Then I loaded the barrels onto their backs and began searching for that new village. The village was a little bit more than a day's trip away from the broken cart, and when I arrived, the sun was about to set. I sold the potatoes to the local farmer and used some of the profit to pay for food and water for my llamas, as well as lodging for the night of day 11. It took me a few more days of traveling before I arrived at the perfect place to build. A nice wide open field with a river and some mountains nearby. I set up a little camp for the night of day 14 and began dreaming up the perfect build. I woke up bright and early on day 15 with a game plan. After I unloaded all of my stuff, I got my pickaxe ready and went to this nearby cave where I began collecting some more iron. This cave actually went pretty deep into the ground and I began searching for all the iron that I could find for both tools and building. While down there, I also found some not so friendly creatures, but all the stuff that I found down there made the trip worth it. Once I had gotten enough iron smelted, I crafted up some iron axes and headed over to a forest close by to collect some oak wood. I didn't realize until now how nice it is to be able to give excess resources to my llamas. I was able to transition seamlessly into collecting some spruce wood from another forest slightly farther away, all without having to worry about filling up my inventory and needing to make a trip back to my base to unload. On day 22, I made it back to my base and began to smelt some cobblestone while I planted that bamboo I gathered at the start of my journey to use for scaffolding. Then I cleared some land to build on during the day and tried my best to light up the area during the night. I had to fight off a lot of monsters this night, but as the night was ending, I had a nice lit up plot with an outline for my build. Cutting down bamboo is so satisfying. I spent day 23 working on a floor plan. Unfortunately, that night my base progress was interrupted by these ferocious winged creatures. I ran to this little hut I built and had to sleep through the night. While I'm cowering in there, let's take a look at this pristine floor plan. I spent the next few days finishing the bulk of the tavern for my future wanderer guild. After getting the floor all filled in, I added some walls and a ceiling and a nice entrance to my build, finishing everything I could do for the first floor. Then I added a second story and a roof, along with a stairwell in the back leading to the second floor. The coolest part was what's on top of the roof, a huge compass to help wandering traders and heroes to find their way. It was starting to look pretty good, but it still needed some work, especially some windows. I spotted what looked like the beginning of a desert biome while I was out chopping trees, so I headed back that way and sure enough, it was a desert. I spent day 27 and 28 collecting sand to turn into glass, and since I was out here, I decided to take a look around and found this desert temple. I disarmed what looked like a trap, and then I dug down and found 9 TNT. That would have killed me for sure. Once I got all that, I started looting the chests and I found a saddle and a golden apple. With all this new loot, I started to head back toward the tavern. On day 29, I made it back home and set the sand to smelt while I unloaded everything I got into a chest. And that's when I heard some noise coming from inside the tavern. When I opened a door, I found a villager waiting inside. Somehow, he had heard I was in the business of helping people, so he tracked me down and awaited my return. He told me to follow him back to his village and that he would explain everything on the way. Apparently, a zombie had gotten into his horse pen and infected this guy's horse. And now that horse is terrorizing his neighbors. We made it to his village on the morning of day 30. And sure enough, the zombie horse was freaking out and chasing villagers. I lured the horse away from everyone and I also let go of my llamas so they wouldn't get accidentally killed. Then
then, after a few swings of my sword, I killed the zombified horse. After the battle, the villager asked me for safe passage to a neighboring village. He gave me a few emeralds and said he'd pay the rest upon safe arrival. We traveled through the night, and I had to fight off a lot of different creatures. But eventually, we did reach the village, and he paid me just as promised. Unfortunately, he had a hidden motive too. The village had a bit of a spider infestation, and my sword broke while I was fighting them off. The blacksmith gave me an enchanted sword with fire aspect on it. <laughs> Let's just say, this was the most terrifying thing that I had to deal with in my life so far. Once I had cleared the village of spiders, the blacksmith said I could keep the sword. I met another wandering trader and invited him to stay at my tavern, and the villager I led here gave me some wheat for my troubles. On the way home, I kind of meandered because I was in search of some flowers for decoration and dye. While exploring, I sheared all the wild sheep I could find. I needed their wool for carpets and beds for the tavern. I was really happy to find a flower biome with an abundance of everything I was looking for. I got several blue and yellow flowers, as well as some red flowers for decoration. And on the night of day 34, I made it back to my base. Day 35, I added the flowers to the outside of my tavern, and on the inside, I put down some carpet to match my warrior robes. For all the rooms upstairs, I put blue and yellow beds, and with the leftover carpet, I gave my llamas something to wear. After that, the sand was finally done smelting, so I could finally install some windows. The next day, I added some details to the downstairs area. There was a front desk area for new arrivals, a nice place to prepare food, as well as a place for the wandering heroes to just eat and relax. The tavern was just about finished, but the outside was still looking a little bland. Before I began making changes to the surrounding area around my base, I figured I could use some more types of rocks, and what better way to collect them than mining for diamonds. I spent day 37 through 40 mining, and once I found my first few diamonds, I crafted myself a diamond pickaxe. And with said pickaxe, I proceeded to mine 13 more diamonds before heading back up to the surface. Day 41, I crafted myself a diamond chestplate and helmet, then it was time to add a pathway in front of my tavern. I used the vines from the swamp to make some mossy cobblestone, and mix that with andesite and normal cobblestone to make a pathway leading over to this bridge that crosses the river toward the Llama Mountains. I also moved everything out here inside. On the morning of day 43, I was looking at my new pathway when I was visited by a carrier parrot with a letter. The letter was probably from the village with no more spider problem because they were close to the jungle with easy access to parrots. The parrot also gave me some emeralds. The letter asked me to burn down a pillager outpost for emeralds as well as for coordinates to a mansion, which would be a nice adventure or at least an easy way to get books. I eventually found the outpost and it was crawling with pillagers. They were not too friendly toward me, so I really needed some backup. Together, this iron golem and I took on all the pillagers. And remember when I found that TNT? <laughs> Let's just say it was a fun trip here for sure. And on the way back to the tavern, I used my flame sword to get some quick steak and pork chops. Day 46, I realized I would need to complete my set of diamond armor. This time, I got a total of 17 diamonds. And on the night of day 48, I was able to complete my set of diamond armor as well as make myself a new pickaxe. When I got back up to the surface and went to go feed my llamas, I found the parrot was waiting for me. It dropped another letter and flew away. But before I could read the letter, a zombie attacked me. So I quickly fed my llamas and went inside. Day 49, I began traveling to the mansion. The letter did have the coordinates just as promised. And that's when I realized that this was my chance to get moss. So I looked through a couple shipwrecks with no luck. It actually wasn't until day 50 when I finally found moss in a shipwreck. And that evening, I found a village by the sea. The butcher there requested that I collect some mushrooms and he said he wanted the spicy ones from the nether. I hesitantly agreed and then he happily found lodging for me for the night. It took me a few days to reach the mansion and since this was a dangerous place, I decided not to put up a fight this time. I snuck in and grabbed the books I needed and then quickly left. Then on the night of day 53, I made it back to the village and spent the night there in a new building. Don't ask me about the other one. Day 54, I sailed on home and that night I went down into my mine to collect some obsidian for an enchanting table and another portal. On the morning of day 55, I built a magical portal to the nether, lit it, and went through. I spawned in a pretty safe area near a basalt delta, then spent the next few days mining for quartz to get some levels for enchanting. And while exploring this dangerous dimension, I definitely had a few close calls. Nothing spamming a bow couldn't solve though. I tried to gather all the mushrooms I could find, but even with that, I faced many more difficulties than anticipated. I guess food was sparse in the nether because the piglins did not want to share. When I made it back to the portal, I had 45 levels and hopefully enough mushrooms for the butcher. The next day, I headed back to the butcher shop and gave him the mushrooms he requested. He wouldn't look at me though. He was a bit of an awkward character. It must have been a long-awaited moment because I'm pretty sure I saw a single tear run down his face when he turned around. He then proceeded to make hot wings and gave me some for my troubles. While it was a unique payment, I was more weirded out than I was mad about the situation, and I really
really needed food anyway. While I was leaving the village, I asked this villager about the butcher, but he turned out to be a zombie. It genuinely startled me. This was such a weird town, but I will admit the chicken was actually pretty good. The next day, I went a bit of ways away from my base and used some of the bones I collected throughout my journeys to grow my moss collection exponentially. Then I transformed this torch spammed area into a mossy grove. I also added moss and secret torches all around my path, as well as some magical lanterns above my bridge. I spent the next three days adding just a few azalea trees around my base, and by a few, I mean I added a whole forest. I would love to see this in vanilla Minecraft, and my favorite addition to the area is definitely this thing. A rather unique enchanting area that is one with nature. The floor did take a long time to make, but it was definitely worth it. Day 65, I went searching through caves for glow lichen to light up my base even more, and I got into a tussle with this skeleton. After killing him, I noticed a spider web in the distance, which meant I found a mine shaft. I spent the night into day 66 exploring the mine shaft and still searching for glow lichen. I definitely found more than I wanted to down there, but I also found some glow berries in a chest, which would be another great addition to my base. Day 67, I added glow berries to the enchanting area and put string under them to stop them from growing. I also put glow lichen on top of all the- as I was saying. I also put glow lichen on top of all the bushes and changed the lanterns here with glow berries. Then I added a new pathway leading down to the river where traders could unload fresh cargo. I spent day 68 and 69 adding the last touches to the base with a huge pen for my llamas, a mossy barn for the llamas to stay in that matches the tavern build style, <laughs> and look there's me bringing in a new herd of llamas from the mountains. Such a peaceful place to live. It was super fun leading all the llamas around, but I noticed there were two more than I was supposed to have. When I went inside the tavern, I was greeted by that fellow wandering hero I met earlier, and he gave me some wheat and emeralds to stay here. I showed him to his room and went to get some sleep myself. On the morning of day 70, I took a look around my new home, satisfied with the completion of my first two goals. I had plenty of llamas and a nice safe haven for wanderers to rest between adventures. And now it was time to complete the last goal. To face a dragon, I would need enchanted armor. Once all my armor was filled with magic, I crafted a new sword with my leftover diamonds and went back into the nether. According to the book, I needed the loot of both Enderman and Blaze. I tried to trade with piglins, but they did not like me. Even while wearing gold armor, something about stolen mushrooms or something. <laughs> so I went out in search for a warped forest instead. Upon finding a warped forest, I scouted out my prey before quickly getting distracted by shiny gold down below. I can be distracted kind of easily sometimes. I cleared out a little area where the endermen couldn't reach me, killed a few of them, and soon I became more confident and switched swords and strategies. It was much faster to charge at them and light them on fire. While a little bit more scary, it is much easier to spot them and give them more damage. Finally, my first ender pearl. It took me a few more days to get enough for the portal. Then I spent day 75 through 77 roaming the different lands of the nether in search of a blaze nest. I tried to use to my advantage all the ghasts that attacked me. I ran into more ghasts than I think I ever fought in one trip through the nether. There were some close calls, but eventually I found what I was looking for. Day 78, I laid siege to the fortress and killed my first blaze before he could even do anything. Then I sparta kicked the skeleton off a cliff and continued to fight my way through the fortress. This is where I ate the last piece of my specially made chicken and I spent the rest of the day fighting blaze for enough rods to activate the portal. I found a saddle in the fortress, so I had to do something I'm not too proud of and killed a strider for some string to craft a fishing rod, but I soon had myself a ride back home. I ended up traveling pretty far from the portal, so it took me a few days of traveling back before seeing that familiar purple glow. I finally made it back to the overworld and got to sleep in my very own bed again. On the morning of day 82, I unloaded my inventory and went to go feed my llamas. Then I set out to find this portal the witch spoke of. I discovered this village that seemed pretty void of life. I couldn't find anyone around, but I did find this hole with a freshly activated lava trap. It looked as though villagers were trapped here and forced to trade. I couldn't imagine who or what could do something like this, but whoever did needed to be stopped. On the morning of day 83, I left the village and found a horse in a nearby field. I rode it for about a day or so until I found another village. I decided to buy some more supplies for my journey, including arrows and food from the locals. Then I continued to ride until I reached an ocean. I let my horse go free and set sail onto the open sea. I eventually arrived at this beach, and this time my eye of ender went right into the ground. It wasn't the brightest idea, but I dug straight down until I fell into the stronghold I was looking for. It took a couple of days to search through the deep dungeons, and I had to be very careful while turning corners and opening up doors because creepers lurked in the darkness. They were more than happy to greet me with an explosive hello. Once this dungeon was fully looted, I made my way back to the portal room and read the witch's instructions one more time. Then I carefully placed all the eyes of ender into the portal and jumped through. I 
could hear giant wings flapping above my head and terrifying roars while I tried to work my way up. I was still in a bit of a daze from traveling between dimensions. The dragon shot its breath at me and cinched my feet. I tried my best to shoot all the floating crystals and watched each explosion with satisfaction. Then I turned my attention to the enraged beast circling me in the sky. Each arrow did a little bit of damage, but eventually the dragon seemed to weaken, and when she flew down to rest, I saw my opportunity. Ran in, and with a few swings of my sword, the dragon let out a powerful cry as she levitated into the air and burst into a million pieces. I quickly grabbed her egg, but her head was gone. However, a new structure had spawned since I entered the dimension. I built a pathway up and curiously went through. The witch never really told me how to get home, so I spent several days wandering through this empty dimension, <laughs> trying my best not to look at any of the endermen who populated these floating rocks. I eventually found this city with a flying ship. I worked my way up in hopes of commandeering it, but when I got up there, I found these wings, I put them on, and I also found this dragon head attached to the front of the ship. When I couldn't figure out how to fly the ship, curiosity got the best of me again. <laughs> Luckily, the wings worked. I glided back down to the ground and continued on my way. On day 95, I found another gateway and went through. It teleported me back to the island where I battled the dragon, and that's when I realized the pool that was around the egg must be the way home. With nothing to lose, I jumped through. Things were a little hazy at first, but when I fully came to, I was back in the tavern by my bed. It felt like it was all a dream, but I was holding the head and the egg of the dragon. I had accomplished my last goal, but collapsed in my bed from exhaustion. Day 96, I woke up feeling refreshed and went to go feed the llamas. Then, I packed up my two traveling companions and began traveling to the coordinates the witch gave me. Upon arrival, I noticed she already had what she tasked me with getting, <laughs> but at this point, I was more focused on getting paid. I began to recount my adventures, but when I mentioned the village with the lava trap, she cut me off and gave me the emeralds, so I gave her the dragon head and the egg. Great job! Now follow me. We traveled to a familiar looking dark oak forest, and she made me leave my llamas in the field. As we ventured deeper into the forest, I realized she brought me to the same mansion I stole the books from. Then she pointed out an evoker who was beginning to make changes to the mansion's roof. Ah! Over there is the creature you're looking for. The one that killed all of those villagers. Once he noticed us, we ran back toward my llamas. Now, I have another job for you. That evoker is planning to attack the village and I need you to protect it. It does pay well if you survive. I wanted revenge for what he did to those villagers, and of course, I wanted the emeralds. So I agreed, and she gave me a bunch of iron and pumpkins to make my own army with. I spent day 98 and 99 traveling back to the tavern, eager to lead iron golems into battle. And on day 100, I made it back to my base, gathered everything I would need, packed up my llamas, and started heading toward the village I swore to protect with my life. If you want to find out what happens next to this wandering trader, you need to watch my evoker video. It will be linked at the end of this video for you to see the evoker's perspective of the storyline. Thanks so much to False Symmetry for helping me make this video, to Luke the Notable for starting the 100 days trend, and I also want to thank Monster Legends for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to download their game using the link in the description, and to collect your free gems, food, gold, and monster before September 26th. Thanks to my patrons, and of course you for watching. Look, there's my evoker video! I mean, you can watch it if you want, I'm not gonna stop you. Thanks for watching!